Brooklyn Independent Television. We're in Pier Glass, which is a glass blowing facility that my wife and I own in Red Hook, Brooklyn. It's a place that we come to create our designs and do work for other people as well. Pier Glass, as a little company, we started in 1994. From high school on, I wanted to make my living creating art pieces. Uh, Mary Ellen had the same desire. And in 1981, I went to work for some glass blowers in Denver, Colorado, grinding and polishing their work. And through the years working with them, I was able to use the hot glass to play with, to learn with on the weekends. And working for them for 10 years, I was offered an opportunity to come to New York, to Brooklyn, and run Urban Glass, a glass blowing facility in downtown Brooklyn. And I used that as a stepping stone to get to a point to where I felt like I knew enough information and I was stable enough with the process to get started on my own. That's when we came to Red Hook and we found this wonderful space and started our company. The glass works itself. We have one main furnace that is what's called a freestanding pot furnace. It's a big ceramic pot standing in the furnace that holds about 300 pounds of molten glass. And then we have two glory holes, which are reheating centers. Along with that, we have four ovens, which are used for annealing the glass. A lot of what we make are pieces that essentially we're blowing a blank that we cut with diamond saws and then grind and polish like gemstones, big gemstones. So we have a full cold working shop that encompasses two diamond saws, uh, one 14 inch, one 16 inch, and a total of five steps to finish grinding and polishing the glass throughout the process. We have a sandblasting facility. This is one of our, our designs of perfume bottle, okay? A stoppered perfume bottle. We've blown the piece, blown it full, round, and symmetrical. Then we cut the sides away with a diamond saw and then go through five steps to hand grind and polish the sides back up. What attracts me to the glass art is its flexibility that I can take a piece of glass and I can stretch it out and I can twist it and I can bend it, especially with heat and gravity. That to me is more exciting than when I work in the hot shop. Usually when I start a piece, I have something already in my mind of what I'd like it to look like in the end, and sometimes I don't. But majority of the pieces, I'm really interested, like I said, in pattern. And so when I pull the cane, I will pull selective colors. And in this case, there are a lot of purples with slivers of other color to create almost um, like a tartan plaid. Different fabrics have always interested me. So then I take those ideas and now I am putting it into a sense of glass, which you would normally not think of fabric being in that mode. I use the glass as the negative space in my painting. So each painting is also painted uh, both the front, the middle, and the back. So for instance, if I paint this tree, first I would paint some of the leaves on here. Then I would paint the branches. Then I would wait for the branches to dry and paint more leaves on top. And I use high fire enamel paints, which are made of glass. And I use this little tiny eyeliner brush to apply the paint so that I can get really tiny thin lines. Because every line that I paint is gonna be magnified in the end by the glass. 
So in order to get the whole image in this small space, I have to paint really small. So first I take a small piece of glass, I make it in the furnace, and a piece of glass may be about the size of a, a salt shaker in a restaurant. And uh, when that's cool and comes out of the oven, just like any other piece of glass, it's now solid and hard, and I can paint on it. When I get the image exactly how I want it, I can uh, now put it back in the oven and warm it up very slowly so that the glass doesn't break as I warm it up. I'm going to bring it up to about a thousand degrees. Then I'm going to pick it up on the end of a metal pipe and I'm going to introduce it to the heat in the what we call the glory hole, which is a reheating furnace, just for a few moments to fire the paint on a little bit. Then I'm going to gather more glass on top of it. Now I'm going to shape that very carefully and cool it down and put it back in an oven overnight to cool down even longer. When it comes out, now I've got a whole new surface that I can paint on. The result of the process is that you're able to build up many layers and use the glass as the space between the painting and also look at the painting from all the way around.